I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just watched the Elton John movie the other night, you know, uh, what was it called? Rocket Man, Rocket Man, you know, I'm into it, I was into it, it was in that Queen movie too, but it was just a different movie, but they're both good, both good, just check them out, okay, I got my sweet shirt on today, okay, so I'm actually probably wondering, I know you're, you're into my fashion, and you want to know where I get my sweet outfits, uh, this is actually a Disney World shirt, if you look closely, you can see the different perks, there, we got Animal Kingdom, we got Epcot, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, okay, very sweet. Um, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, we are entering a day where the problem solving starts. Mm -hmm. Some of you are going, oh my God, no. Yes, a lot of it, a lot of problem solving in this class. And some of you are going, yes, bring it. I love problem solving. I love problem solving. You're like me, okay? We dance over that. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, you're my favorite then. Okay, now, so let's go through. Um, we have our topic list for today. Okay, here's our topic list. A lot of topics there today we have to go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some of them are just terms and they'll go by pretty quick. Uh, but also what I want you to do is I want you to get this. I want you to get the problem sheet. And that is problem set for in today's date. Uh, you know, you look at the date, what the, what's the date today? Okay, go find it. Go find problem, example problems. Actually, it's under E, so go down, find E, example problem and pick out the first one because these are the problems. We have to go through six problemas in order to get the problems done for this particular day. I want to say week because typically if we were meeting during the fall or spring, it would be a week. But it's not a week. I mean, this is, this is Monday, and then on Wednesday, we have to go through a whole bunch of other problems. And all of a sudden, what? The test is coming up. Mm -hmm. It'll be here before you know it. Okay, let's go. I'm just babbling out here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, first thing we have to go through is solution concentrations. Solution, okay, those are things floating around, and concentration. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm really good at charades. That was my concentration charade. Okay, and you can see it says percent by mass, then molarity and molality. Let's go through all three of them and what they mean. The first one, percent by mass, is the least used. In but we, you will occasionally see salt solutions, like sodium chloride, common salts, sometimes in solutions, like a 5% salt solution. And what does that mean? So percent by mass, it's a percent. Any percent, any percent, any percent is always partial divided by whole. Now, in the last video, we went through some solution terms. We talked about what a solvent is, what a solute is, and most of our solutions, and that is very true in chemistry, uh, are, are going to be your water solutions. So, well, let's go through how to do concentrations of those. So, mass percent, any percent, is partial divided by whole. So, I'm going to write that down, partial divided by whole. Okay. The partial is the solute that's dissolved in the solvent. So the solute, this is going to be mass, percent mass, mass of the solute, divided by the mass of the whole, the whole thing. Solute and solvent together make solution. So we need the mass of the solution. So mass of the solution. I'll give you a problem with one of these on your first academic adventure. I will, and some of you are going to forget to take the mass of the solute and add it to the mass of the solvent together to get the mass of the solution. So that's what you have to do. This is the, com the combination of solute and solvent, and that's solute. Divide percent, multiply by 100. Okay, multiply by 100, and you'll get your percent by mass. All right, not very commonly used, but occasionally we'll see it with salt solutions. So we should know, be aware of it, and know how to calculate it. All right, next one. On the list is molarity. This one, I would say, is the most important because it's the most common. Molarity is the most common way of expressing concentration. Now, concentration, we're talking about how salty is it most of the time. We're talking about you know, water solutions. How salty is it? Is it a little bit salty or is it like bleh, bleh, salty? Because that would be more concentrated because there's more salt per unit of volume. And this one is the most important. Okay, molarity. Molarity is big M, not italicized, okay? The italicized little m is your molality, but the big M is molarity. 
I know you get that. Moles. Molarity. Okay, moles. Moles of the solvent divided by liters, liters of solution. solution. So if you don't have these units, you need to get your things into these units. If you are giving grams, you need to calculate grams to mole conversion. I always tell my students in Chem 1, the most important thing that you need to remember from this class is how to convert grams to moles and moles to grams. And they don't go away. Okay, so if you have grams, you need to convert that into moles. And this, if you give them milliliters, which usually is what we mass or we, we um, do the volume for in lab, we do volumes in, in milliliters. So we have to get to the liters. Okay, so this is moles per liter. Moles per liter. Now we're going to do some problems with these examples. You can see right here, okay, those are the first problem examples we're gonna do. So I will do examples with these momentarily. Let's just lay the groundwork before we dive into those. Okay, what's next? What's next? Next, molality. Molality. Little M italicized. Molality. Sounds like I have too much to drink, right? Molality. Ah. No, no. Molality is moles of the solvent. Same thing, same thing, but the bottom is different. Not liters of solution, two things different here kilograms of solvent. So we go from liters of solution to kilograms of solvent. So two different things on the bottom, the same on the top. Now, um, I'll ask the question uh, here, advantages in, uh, in concentration, advantage of the concentration units. What are the advantages of these? Advantages. Um, the, the advantages of these are as follows. This one, and you will be make well, actually, you're not going to, are you? Because we're online. If we were not online, you would be making your own solutions in a couple of these labs. I would not be doing it for you. You would go and make them. And it's easy to do concentrations in molarity. It's easy because we have what are called volumetric flasks. We have flask of 250, 500, and 1,000 milliliters, which is a liter. A liter. So we have liter flasks, and you just have to know how much mass to put into the flask when you calculate the moles, and that's an easy thing to do. Um, it's not hard, not hard. You know, chem 1 students, Chem 2 students, you can do it, not hard. So it's quick, and it's easy. All right, so it's effective. Get it done quick. This one here. Kilograms of solvent, okay, it's not quite as quick because you have to do massing down here, not volumes, and we don't have, and this is using volumetric pre-measured flasks, but this one has an advantage under extreme temperatures. Okay, if we're using room temperature, lab temperature, 18 degrees Celsius to 25 to 28 degrees Celsius, 18 would be a little cold in the lab, you'd be kind of going, I need to put my sweatshirt on, and if it's 28, you're going, <laughs> a little hot in here. But that's the range of lab temperatures. That's the one you want to use. Easy. But if you're talking extreme temperatures, we're talking zero degrees, you know, when water freezes normally. We're going to find out today water doesn't always freeze at zero degrees. And water boils at 100, right? But you're talking about 100 degrees. Those are extreme temperatures. You would not want the lab to be 100 degrees. That would be a bad day for you in that lab. And it's you know, zero degrees. You're like, you're in your parka doing lab. Okay, not fun. Those are extreme temperatures. But if you have to use extreme temperatures, you're boiling a solution or you're trying to freeze a solution, then this one is the one you want to use. So this week's lab, last week's lab was heat of fusion melting ice. This week's lab is going to be called Colligative Properties of Solutions. That means we're going to be using extreme temperatures, boiling solutions and freezing them. And if we're going to do that, we want to use molality. We're going to use molality in the lab this week because, well, what difference does it make? You have extreme temperatures. Well, so what? Because, think about it. Come on, think, think, think. This is volume. What happens to water when it freezes? 
a lot of you know this. What happens to water when it freezes? It, most things when they freeze, they get cold, right? Oh, they undergo shrinkage. Oh, shrinkage, Seinfeld, anyone, anybody? Okay, uh, yeah, okay, sorry, a little awkward. Um, so yeah, so, so, shrinking down. But water's weird. Water doesn't do that. Water expands. <laughs> water gets bigger. So if you've ever had pipe freeze in the house, that is a really expensive bill because water will freeze when it gets too cold. Of course, it expands when it gets cold. And that's bad. Ruptured pipes are a mess, literally a mess. So the volume changes at cold and at warm temperatures. So if we have volume changes, think about this. You put a smaller or a larger number in the denominator, what does that do? That changes your concentration, right? It changes your concentration. So the concentration doesn't maintain at high and low temperatures. It changes, which is not good if you're trying to do control and experiment. So under extreme conditions, we go with molality because this concentration will not change at different temperatures because mass is mass, no matter how cold it is or how warm it is. Okay? That is not going to change like volume does. Volume expands and contracts, mass doesn't change. So this one for extreme temperatures, this one for ease in normal lab situations. Normal lab temperatures, I should say. Um, all right, I think that's going to cover everything. Now we're ready to do some example problems. All right, next video, example problems.